Good morning and welcome to Asian Focus. I'm Mary Sitt. Babies are smarter than you think, and our next guest is researching how babies emotionally interact with their mothers when they're under stress. Dr. Cindy Liu is a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard Medical School Children's Hospital. She earned her PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Oregon and completed her clinical internship at Harvard Medical School at McLean Hospital. Thanks for being with us, Cindy. Thank you so much. Tell me about babies now. Um, why did you get in, how did you get into this research of babies and infants and how they react? Well, first of all, I started out under, um, researching children between the ages of five to seven, in particular Chinese American and European American um, kids in the Bay Area, San Francisco okay. Bay Area. And from there, I was curious as to how do these children develop the emotion, expressivity, and experience that we, were, we observed. Did you notice a difference between the Chinese American children, the five to seven years, versus the European? children? Yeah, in fact we did. One of the hypotheses that we had going in was that Chinese Americans would be a bit more subdued and show less emotion compared to the European American. When they're under stress. When they're under stress. And this is somewhat fitting of kind of the overarching um, thought that Asians tend to be less expressive and so that was what we had expected. Um, we wanted to see if that was true and so what I did was I went into their homes, mm -hmm. videotaped them while they were performing a task that was rather frustrating. What did they have to do? Well, they had to stack these slippery dominoes on their, oh, on okay. their slides, okay. uh, on the sides, mm -hmm. and they tended to fall. Um, I asked them to do it as quickly as they could and um, to try to get it as high as they could, and they would inevitably fall. Mm -hmm. And what I would find is that the European American children would verbalize their frustration, they would sigh, they might even kind of pound their fists mm -hmm. on the table, and Chinese American children, these are five to seven year olds, would be pretty intense. They wouldn't show as much emotion, expression, or mm -hmm. frustration, but this was only when they were alone. Okay. When they were with their moms, these two groups showed similar levels of frustration. So what does that mean? Does it mean that they, ex is it a cultural thing? Is it a genetic thing? Or why do they act differently with their moms versus alone? Well, I think one of the, th the assumptions is that Asians don't uh, react in any situation and what this finding suggests is that it really depends on the situation that perhaps in the context of someone whom they feel very close to that they can kind of share their emotion with that they will express and this actually has implications for um, teachers who mm -hmm. often um, say to me you know I, I can't really tell how this Asian American student feels um, you know how, how can I be able to tell who I can help and perhaps what, what one thing we can do is try to foster a relationship between teachers and Chinese American students so that students may feel like they can trust the teacher and really verbalize that they need help. Cindy, where do these differences come from though? Is it something they learn from their parents? So it's a cultural thing? You know, it, it seems like it's cultural in the sense that um, moderating emotion, there, it's rooted in um, Chinese culture, mm -hmm. their benefits to moderating your emotion um, health-wise, but also because you don't really want to stick out, and that's kind of the general overarching um, So they, get that, they get that message from their parents then? Yeah, right? it's possible that they get it from their parents, so that's definitely a cultural thing. Um, I think some people may also believe that it could be biological, that maybe um, Asian Americans tend to be less expressive um, in general, and we really don't know, although certainly um, these behaviors um, having to do with emotion can be learned. Um, so what are you learning from babies now? Yeah, so one thing that we're interested in is, is this similar in four-month-old children. Okay. And at that point, you know, you, you wonder, well, can they actually learn these mm -hmm. types of behaviors or is it, um, like you mentioned, more biological? Mm -hmm. And so we went down to four months to just see if there's a difference. And um, so far, we haven't um, analyzed the data. We're collecting data. Let's look at some pictures you brought of some babies yeah. and moms in the laboratory, okay? Absolutely. And you, uh, while we see these pictures, you, okay, what are we looking at here now? Well, we're cute looking, little baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely very cute. So this is called the still face paradigm. Uh -huh. We have the mom sitting opposite from her child, and they're um, basically looking at each other, interacting with each other. The paradigm, um, in the paradigm, we ask the mom to play with the infant, as you see here, uh -huh. for about a minute. Um, they're just playing, as you can see. He's smiling. So they're cooing and being happy and yes. chatting with each other. Okay. And then you're just yeah. analyzing how the baby looks when, when he or she's, is, a, is that a boy baby or a girl? I can't this tell. This is um, a little boy, I believe. Okay. So you see how they're, they look when they're happy then, Yes. Right? And here you'll see that, you know, he's sort of smiling, but the mom is staying very still. And she's not showing the positive emotion that she showed before. 
Um, so this is the beginning of that still face where she's just holding still. So you want the mom to be stone faced in order to stress the baby out to see how the baby will react, is that right? Right, well it's a, it's a short term stress. Mm -hmm. um, it's not anything more stressful than what the infant might not naturally go uh, through during uh -huh. the course of everyday life. But here you can see that the infant is trying to get the mom's attention. Right. He has his hands out. Waving the hand, mom, mom, and, and the mom has to stay stone faced. Yes. And so, and so you're still collecting data, but what are you, are you beginning to notice certain patterns? With, with four month old babies? Well, we do know that for, um, from, from previous studies that mm -hmm. children from different cultures show the same pattern in this um, particular procedure, which is gaze aversion, decrease in smiling. The gaze aversion, that they stop looking at mom. If yes. they can't get mom's attention and they're upset, they just look away? They kind of look away, yeah, okay. and, and kind of a way to cope with the stress okay. that they're experiencing. Um, what we don't know, though, if they're, what we don't know is if there are kind of small differences mm -hmm. in the way that infants cope with that distress across groups. And so the study that we're doing basically will be looking and answering that question. Are there going to be these nuanced differences in the way that infants react? At age four months, there can be yes. that kind of a difference in how they react to stress, really? Yeah, certainly, because one thing that we're also measuring is infant temperament. And mm -hmm. what we do know is that Asian babies, uh, compared to white American babies, may be less reactive. Um, and really, at that yeah, time? Yeah, okay. it, um, there are some findings to suggest that, and so we're looking at that as well. You know, you always hear the old, old folk wisdom sort of like, is you're, you're just sort of born with the temperament, whatever you are, you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what you're finding out, that you people, are, babies are just born with a certain temperament, you know, that's sort of the easygoing, or the real sensitive hyper, mm -hmm. or the real energetic, or is, is that... Truth? Are yeah, you, yeah. It's something that we call individual differences. Uh -huh. That some babies are more calm, some babies may get more excited, um, they may more react more quickly to novel stimuli. So there's a range of these different behaviors. What we're trying to understand is what are the range of those behaviors for Asian babies? What's the range of behaviors for white American babies? Cindy, what's the practical um, application of all this research? Will this in the end sort of be a, a, pr a primer for parents on how to parent, or, you know, notice these reactions and therefore do this ABC or, or what? Well, I think one thing that we're really trying to establish is what are healthy interactions between mothers and infants. Okay. And those who come into our lab are healthy mothers and infants. And when we establish that range of interactions, that's useful information for practitioners such as pediatricians mm -hmm. or nurses who may be seeing um, these mothers and infants in their uh, clinics or centers and so that they are able to better judge what is normal, what might be problematic and not to make mistakes. Um, isn't this instinctive for a mom to realize, you know, my baby's stressed, I need to cuddle or kiss her or hold her or something like that? Or is it something that parents need to learn to do? Well, I think it is instinctive, and I think parents are the experts of their own children. Mm -hmm. um, so they are experts, but at the same time, I think what's useful with this uh, type of procedure is to better understand exactly under what conditions does your infant respond, and in what way do they respond, and to really be attuned to that. Um, I think that that's something that we can really benefit from this type of research. If a mother doesn't, uh, if she has her own health issues, let's say she's postpartum depression, for mm -hmm. instance, I mean, that's got to affect the way the baby develops, or does it? Are you, are you researching that aspect? Absolutely. There have been research in our lab having to do with um, postpartum depression, mm -hmm. and certainly mothers who um, experience that depression, it's very difficult to parent an infant because you yourself are suffering, mm -hmm. and um, the way that they may interact with their infants can d differ. Now, you're always looking for participants, right, for your study? Tell me I about am. that. Well, so one thing that we're really trying to do is to invite Asian Americans in the local Boston area to participate in research, and I think that a lot of times people don't know that they can actually be part of research and be part of uh, science. And so in uh, this study, we're looking for um, those who are interested to um, come into the lab, and you also get um, a small gift of $50 um, as a token of our appreciation for helping out. And the baby has to be a certain age? You want four-month-old babies only? Yeah, well, we're looking for four-month, where they get brought in for, at four months, but we're looking for those who, m women who are pregnant or who have given birth recently, okay. you know, we can schedule that, uh, them to come in. And they can just email you, right? Yes. Your email address is C? It's cindy.liu uh -huh. at children's um, dot harvard dot edu. Okay, and you can look good. at our website. Um, you can uh, basically search for my name, Cindy Liu, and Children's Hospital. Okay, great. Good luck in your studies, Cindy. Thank you.